What's up? This is Sergio Vega, and you're watching Good Company with Paula. Hey guys, my name's Scott Bowling, and I'm with the man, Sergio Vega. Yes. Took me a couple of times to remember his last name. Well, thank you for having Dude, me. Dude, thank you, you so much. You remembered on the show? You, yeah, you, I did, you, man. You know, you're know, you right there. Sergio, man, we went on the lake. It was so awesome. We didn't go on a boat. Gorgeous. On the dock. Yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is a beautiful day. Thank From you. From what I understand, this is like the last day of spring. It is. It's going to be hot as balls mm -hmm. uh, next week and for the rest of the summer. But we got to see the water. <laughs> Do you go on the lake at all? Or is this... Well, I was saying while we were down on the lake, uh -huh. you know, I live in the Bronx, we have puddles. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, you know, I'm down on the puddle sometimes, but no, <laughs> no, not really, no. Dude, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the Bronx. You, know, you were born and raised in the Bronx. Yes. Right, so yeah. 70s, 80s, yeah. yeah. So what was the music scene back then, man? Um, well, it was interesting. It was like a couple of different things. Like, it was what my mother was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, my family's from Puerto Rico. It was um, salsa. It was also like, uh, my parents divorced when I was young. It was a lot of Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, on repeat. Nice. And um, when I was around my father, it was a lot of Avita. Really? Soundtrack. Go you figure. It's a good soundtrack, Go right? Go figure, it's a great soundtrack. All right, pause right. one second. Let me uh, hit this. <laughs> we keep rolling. Look, I forgot to hit the video, man. We're <laughs> going on a rough start. We're gonna keep this in though. So. But, uh, but um, the, the salsa thing, did, did, were they like it, go, go out and do the salsa like dance? Well, my mother and all does. That? My mother uh, like does events, and oh, okay. so it was like a lot of that. You know, really? so seeing artists and seeing things like that. Did your mom and dad play instruments? Or no, just they're like, visual artists. Oh, that's cool. But then in my neighborhood itself was mostly was mostly hip hop, and um, and like freestyle, like electronic kind of like Latin music, mm -hmm. and. That was that was my There's thing. Some Latin music. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, and then my cousin, actually, um, his name is uh, his name is Chino Moreno. That's and your cousin. My cousin got me into music. He's the one who got me into music. He's a uh, he's a pianist and a keyboardist, and he was in a group called Temper at the time. Okay. So they had like they were like a one hit wonder in like the freestyle world. Yes. So I was like, oh, that's cool, you know. So I, even though I had like more of a visual arts background from my parents, uh -huh. my my cousin seeing him, he was just cool, and his world inspired me yeah. to veer into music. How did you pick up a bass? Like, did they inspire you to play bass? Your cousin? No, television did. What? How, yeah. Who who on television did? Danny Partridge. Partridge family. Yeah, Partridge family. No way. And um, Tom and Jerry. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so I was like, I'm mine was like it. the monkeys. I, I was like, that was I like the, the first, monkeys too. That was the first big. Yeah, like, for me. but it, it wasn't like to where I thought to play. I just like to watch it. And the monkeys I thought were great. I love mm -hmm. their their singing and stuff, their melodies. But like, but you would watch the Partridge Family show and watch him. Yeah, play. I see Danny Partridge, and I was like, yeah. what he represented was cool to me because he was like mischievous, just uh -huh. kind of like this badass dude. You know, to me, you know, that's who I resonated with. And um, did you pick up the guitar first or bass? Bass, because so I was, didn't. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, this dude plays bass. And then there was Tom and Jerry, so to where like there's the episode <laughs> where he's playing the bass like, is you is or is you ain't my baby, boom, boom, boom. And yes. I was like, I mean, that connection between that, singing to girls through, you know, out the window, mm -hmm. and Did you, that yeah. asked, and I was like, you know, bass, what yeah. bass. And then I, I, I started orchestra that, that fall. The orchestra, okay. Yeah. And you played bass orchestra, I mean, that's cool. Mm -hmm. How did you get your first bass? Did you like have to ask your parents, was it like, is it a Christmas gift? Like, no, what's going on? I, no, a little more nefarious. Okay, uh, yeah. When I got into like punk and hardcore, like at that time I wasn't into punk or hardcore. I was playing like the upright bass in school. I had a little cover band, and we were doing all Hollow Note songs. Dude, that is awesome. The last and interview then, I had, I was wearing Hollow Note shirt. Yeah, but it was like I was on an upright still. <laughs> then, uh, That's yeah. amazing. But is there any footage still around? There was no footage. Your no footage. This is in school. Hollow Note, yeah, this Sergio. is like yeah, this is like in like. Middle school, like middle school, you could play that in middle school, like these. Oh yeah, man eater, gone, man eater. Maybe? No, not the good, not the hard stuff. Oh okay. Yeah. I, I, and I and I think I'm probably overselling it by saying we had a cover band. We had two songs. <laughs> okay. My Holland Outs. Man eater. Man eater. And what else? I don't remember, but Man eater I can still play. Oh yes, yeah. Yes. I, was, I, could, I mean, I figured that one out. That's a love hate song, man. People love it or hate it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it started me on my journey, <laughs> and uh, but how I got my first bass guitar was 
borrowing it from this kid downtown when I'd gotten into hardcore mm-hmm. or punk first, you know, punk. Yeah. And I just and I just held on. That's to always it. important, man. When you meet somebody, was he older than you? Or uh, the same about age? the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always cool when somebody can kind of introduce you to other stuff. I, you know, when I was a kid, I met a, a guy that was a few years older than me, and my brother's a few years older than me. And I always look up to them. So it's like, whatever they oh, yeah. like, I thought was cool. That's, that, a, was that's how it was my cousin. No, no, not my friend. My friend, I just was like, we weren't super tight. He just had a bass. Mm-hmm. I was like, can I borrow your bass? And he was like, yeah. But and punk's then, your first love, though? My I mean, first love? Not love, but yeah, but the first. It would, mm, besides Partridge Family, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Tom and Jerry. The first record I ever bought was uh, by, uh, it was by a band called Planet Patrol, Ooh. Play at Your Own Risk. It's kind of like the same instrumental as, it's like um, Africa Bambata. Yeah. Uh, I forget the name of the song, but they actually have the same instrumental. So Play at Your Own Risk is the same track, but instead of rapping on it, it's singing. Oh, that's cool. I gotta mm-hmm. look this up. So um, how did you, your friend got you into that? No, no, that's my, that's just from my neighborhood. That's cool. The first things I used to buy, honestly, were cassettes. Yeah, and all of us did, right? this was from a guy called a Tape Master. And it was a mall a little mall in the Bronx, or like, and they had a, not well, not a mall. What are they like a like a place where you have little stands and whatever, mm-hmm. and you buy whatever. So I love that. Like, uh, did you do tape trading too? No, I did. I bought tapes from this guy, and they were just like live performances of, of rap groups that he was bootlegging. I love so that. he would like yes. go to see local uh, parties and mm-hmm. and record all the shows and the rappers, and he mm-hmm. sold those. Do and you I, still have any? No. Yeah, no, I, I don't either. Up. I'm not, I wasn't good. Later I became an archivist. You know, yeah. I, I have stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. But from that part of my life, I have nothing, which is sad. <laughs> I have nothing. Uh, so when did you start playing live? Like your first, you know, well, you said middle school for- For two, school, yeah, in the auditorium. Eater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but- Were well, you I, nervous on stage for your uh, man-eater performance? No, no, I didn't yeah. think about it like that. You know? I didn't either, man. When you're younger like that, I guess that's not as big deal. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think I was, I, it was just so much fun to do the song. It was like, we didn't have a vocalist. We, the, the vocal melodies was played by a kid on saxophone. Oh, that's cool. Who, yeah, his father was the, yeah. his father was the music teacher. Mm-hmm. And we had a drummer. Oh, okay. So we're a trio. That sounds really good, man. It was pretty cool. What our yeah. two songs we did. I like that. No, that's I, don't, I don't know if anyone appreciated it, but. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. It was fun. So, so in high school, were you in bands? Did you? Mm-hmm. Uh, did you do anything in, 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 high, in high school? school I kind of transitioned, like that's when I got really into punk and yeah. hard, really punk and started buying punk records. What was your favorite punk band? Like your, your first, you know, did you listen to Bad Brains? I had H. Well, later, here. you know, it was interesting because I, I had to find this stuff out on my own. Oh, and I was, okay. um, yeah. and I was like 16, 17. Mm-hmm. And I found a place called Dantateria. I had Dantateria? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you look it up, it's like a four story club in Manhattan, like still there? No, no. Yeah, yeah, right. And um, so what I used to do was I used to go there on my own, mm-hmm. and they would let you in young at that time. You know, I don't even know what I told my mother, <laughs> but like I used to go down there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then uh, I would make my way up to the fourth floor, which I thought was the punk rock floor. And a few years later, I found out that I was like chilling on the goth floor. So all the records <laughs> I was buying with the money I was saving up was like goth records. I bought like early Cure, oh, early cool. Cult. Um, Susie and the Banshees, uh, Alien Sex Fiend, and all these bands that I was reading off of jackets that I saw there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was kind of like my introduction to what I thought was punk. Now, what I realized later (laughs) was like- like, Punk is depressing. I was like, (laughs) well, I thought it was like romantic. Yeah, romantic, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. And then, but then I'm like, on the first floor, what I didn't realize until later was I was walking right by and not paying any attention to hardcore shows, mm-hmm. and they had hardcore on the first floor, but because of the way they looked and what I identified as punk, I didn't. Re- it didn't register. What year is this? You're this is about? like what time frame? this is like mid late eighties. Oh, okay. So you're not talking about like when you talk about hard rock. Like I'm trying to think. No of like, hardcore. Like they were hardcore, hardcore bands. Like yeah. Agnostic Front or like yeah, all the, like whatever tight. hardcore bands were playing there. Yeah, like yeah, I couldn't yeah. even tell you who they. You know, who who I was seeing at the time because uh-huh. I would just walk right past it. Yeah. Because they didn't have Mohawks, they didn't have this. I was like, I, it didn't register. What'd you think of like Poisons and Motley Crues and the 80s? I, I didn't even, I, I that came into my life later. Yeah. So that came after, that came after Bad Brains and Cro-Mags and, uh, yeah. and all that. Then I had to, I had a friend who was like a, a mentor who was like 20 some odd years old. Or he, was, <laughs> he, he, he was like a weed dealer. And who was I, he? <laughs> uh, 
but mostly he was a producer. He produced the first Bad Brains Roar cassette. He, oh, did, yeah. he did the Cro-Mags uh, first cassette. That's he did a band Antidote. So that was your friend? He was my mentor friend. Mentor and friend. And yeah, That's like amazing. he was everybody's friend. Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. And he turned me on to like Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and I love that things man. like that. So it kind of went, it went like urban dance, you know, New York, uh, Bronx, punk, hardcore, really goth. Yeah. And then uh, I got introduced to like rock. Did you have like in your room? Did you have like a big boombox where you'd play all this music at your mm -mm. house? You didn't. You, you no, play I had my with mother's stereo. My mother, my mother had my mother had a stereo. What she think about it when you're like about which your thing? music? Yeah, just playing like some like Chrome Max. Oh so. no, yeah, no she <laughs> she's like weapon of the salsa. <laughs> I had to do a presentation because my mother's also she was also at the, like a college teacher, you know, professor oh, things. Yeah. So, so I did a presentation. Uh, and, and I and sat, sat hey, around in the living room. You did a presentation room. to her. About, yeah, I did a presentation <laughs> to her about discharge. And I used discharge as my example of how they had common common uh, beliefs. Did you have props and stuff like that? Like, I had the record. Like, I said, you can see yeah, here in this lyric. Did you have like a little laser in your point and you see? Mom? No. Like, like, no, like, I didn't like, have like, like a that. ruler and stuff. No, but, like, but she got it. She was like, what the? You know, she was like, what is this? Yeah. And, you know, why aren't you with all this? And I said, well, look, you can see that with your beliefs and these guys, it's like you're yeah. coming from the socioeconomic kind of thing. And I was like, even though this music is harsh to you. And she was like, all right. Dude, you sound like a smart kid. <laughs> and that's just, amazing. I'm just trying to make it through the I'd day. I'd be like, I just <laughs> want to listen to it. I didn't, you know, I didn't have a presentation. Yeah, I had, well, cause he was just like, mm, what, what's going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so I just <laughs> Now, did you um, go to school with some of the guys in quicksand? No. Like, uh, okay. No, so those guys, guys are from like Queens and, yeah, from Queens. Queens, right? and you're from Bronx. Yeah. yeah. But how'd you guys like find each other, man? We met, by this point, we're all downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, so everybody, it became like a hub for everyone from all the boroughs and even from like Long Island and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's cool. And it became, what I loved about it was you get there and everyone who is not fitting in where they were you know, where they were coming from, mm -hmm. were compelled to have to find a place where they fit in, you know? Yeah. And then they, people just found each other. You found it's each like other at shows, you found each other at things, and you start to become friends. I and love that, dude. Spending days together, you know, before you'd have to go, everyone would have to go home. Mm -hmm. So this was still at a time where every, most people living with their parents. Mm, okay. And, okay. Um, you know, so you spend the day together, go to matinees, and then go your own way, go back, go back to living with your moms, you know, and then like at the point where, um, I think in our late teens, people started getting their own apartments, pulling it together, getting Super matches, and yeah. you know, doing, a lot, doing like five people in apartments and uh -huh. whatever, whatever. Everybody's so, got their bands and stuff. Are you like posting mm -hmm. flyers on? No, no, like by, I, I kind of came into it in a cool way of that, like there was already momentum, there were bands, there were things. Mm -hmm. So how I came into it was like, you know, with, um, Places that were already established so you can get shows and and mm. we didn't have to do what I had heard about people doing in other places like that, like going up, putting putting up flyers and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. We would have a couple of, of key record stores, mm -hmm. but mostly word of mouth. And mostly if people were making flyers, you know which park to go to. Mm -hmm. There was really one park to go to. And you go there and hang out and just let people know you were playing and just That's that so would be cool. enough. Yeah. Did you have like demo tapes you'd hand out? Like cassette mm, tapes? No, people would sell them. Yeah, you had yeah, demos, yeah. you know, if they made a demo, you would sell them at, a, at your shows. Yeah. And um, one of my first bands, my, like my first few bands lasted maybe like a few months or a year, like a couple of them, they would have members of this and this and this, mm -hmm. you know, so we made cassettes. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. I feel like back in the day, I probably said this before, but I remember, because I was in bands growing up too, and yeah. we always did band photos, and that was the biggest thing. Like oh, we had cool. no music, but it's like, it's band photo day, you know? I, yeah, did you guys do that? Like, where you like hire, hire somebody to take cool band photos? No, that's amazing. I don't know why, yeah. man. I grew up in the 90s, that was the thing. Like, we always had band photos, but anyway. Oh, what I, you remind me of, there's a friend of mine who would have like, all of his marketing stuff tight. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have members. He was like, I got my shirt, I got my stuff, and I was Dude, like, that sounds like tight. Lars Ulrich, man. Oh, Lars like, that's tight. Got, had everything, but no band. Yeah, yet, but had the name, had everything, and then you just build out a band. And Dude, Lars Ulrich, same thing. He had that one song on the compilation, and he's like, we're gonna call Metallica. And you know they misspelled it on the thing. Mm -hmm. and he didn't really even have a band. That's what I've always heard. You know, that's the same thing. I think it's that's funny. great. You just kind of like yeah. visualize it and it so comes by the, together. So by the time you guys hook up with Quicksand. Um, did you guys, were you guys recording demos at the time? Uh, no, you know? we jumped, that was cool because that kind of been kind of fast-tracked because mm. at that point, like, especially everyone but myself, 
already had a history in the sense of like things that were released. They were all, all had stuff out on Revelation. Oh, all I've been wow. touring. I had bands, but nothing that made it out of mm-hmm. out of New York. And um, actually, me well, nothing made it out of the tri-state area. Yeah. And uh, these guys had already been doing more, traveling internationally, traveling nationally. That's and cool, man. So when Quicksand yeah. got together, we just jumped straight into Revelation Records. We were just right on Revelation Records, and that was it. That was it. And mm-hmm. you, yeah, you got the first album here. Um, you know, it's at the very bottom. Oh, no, no, I got it right here. Look at this. Yeah. Man, this is a good album. You know, like I was going back and listening to this. It's so good. I oh, missed this train on this, like when this came out. And I actually discovered you guys because of Deftones in 98. And I went back and listened to this. But man, you guys had a sound. I love it. There's something like I was, I was listening to a lot of Helmet at the time. And then mm-hmm. when I'm listening to this, I'm not saying you guys sound just like Helmet. No, but this, I, could, this. I feel like you guys could have gone on tour. And we did. Amazing. You did? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah, Helmet. we did. And I listened yeah, to this, I'm like, you guys are really good, man. It's fun because they came... From like, you know, like Paige, like John Stanier had had his history and where he comes from, how he came up, and Paige, and they came up through, you know, with M Rap and a whole, mm-hmm. you know, like a parallel thing yeah. that, that crossed over in a sense. But it was cool that like they we stumbled on similar vibes, similar tempo, similar. Things. That's cool, and, man. Yeah. And how long did you guys go on tour with them? I think we did probably like a couple of months. I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's tight. Yeah, Are you guys in bands or like? Uh... No, no, we're in a bus. Well, that's good, man. Yeah. That's awesome, man. <laughs> I mean, Quicksand did bands. We, we, like, when we did bands, our bands were... What's we that like, a, dude? Doing bands our particular van? Were... <laughs> our van was jacked. <laughs> our van was jacked. It was parked in in Queens. It lost its windows very early on, and we had to... We, we didn't have, like... How did it lose its windows? How do you break your windows? People broke them. Oh, people, they just broke into people it. People broke into it. People would sleep in it. People did you get your equipment stolen? No, we wouldn't We wouldn't keep our equipment in it. Oh, that's that, good. No, like, living in New York at that time, that was not an option. <laughs> and, like, so we wound up with plexiglass for windows. We wound up with seats that weren't bolted down. Yeah. And we would just we pack it with our gear, sit on a seat that, on a bench that wasn't bolted. Yeah. And, like... Just hope you made it. How old were you when this came out? Because you got to be young dealing with all these. I couldn't do that. Yeah, I can imagine like, doing that as an this old, is like, older. This is know? like like you're hitting like late teens and then it's fresh like out 20, of high school, like twenty. No, you're like kind of like bailing on college. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. Got you. Yeah, you. Like you're literally bailing on college. <laughs> what was the recording experience like when you're doing this, man? Do you guys have all the songs written? Was it no, easy? No. Or, do you write in the studio when you're doing it? No, we had um. I mean, there's like a couple of these songs were also on our EP. Mm, well, yeah. And I think for Quicksand at that time, there was a lot of, uh, what I what I cherish about it was the kind of like, we weren't quite sure what we wanted to be, mm-hmm. but we knew what we didn't want to be. So it was a process of like creation by negation. You know, we had a lot of ideas and we'd be like, this is to this, this is to that. And all these things would fall by the wayside. And we were at that time doing tours and doing shows with not without a, a true set. Yeah. We would make things up like placeholders for, for the run and just wow. have some kind of songs and kind of wing it. Oh, okay. And this put us in the position of really... Well, you guys sound like you're all on the same page, like everybody kind of wants the same thing. Well, we didn't know, we didn't know what it was. We knew what we didn't want. We what did you, like, you not want? What, what was at the, the time, it was like to veer into too much of anything that okay. felt like anything. You know, so yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, this is a little too metal, you know, or this is a little sound. too funky, or this is a little too this, this is a little too that. Everything was too something. So whatever survived and made it on that record was so vetted and like, mm. we were proud of it. Yeah, know? man. We really proud. A lot of work. Do you go back and listen to it or can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Playing bass, I mean, you, do you ever think like I should have done this or should have done that? Or Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I think, yeah. And I think every, everyone does that. And I hear that most from drummers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Most from drummers because like, they would hit things different. It's like, oh, if I knew that that was going on vocally, I would have done this. But did, but did they do that live then? So when yeah, you're live, songs so keep you living. fix it. Yeah, like you do songs with whatever. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on the band. But like, I think a, um, you're catching something. This is kind of like for the for the projects I've been in, the songs that are recorded, they're babies. They're, they're born for that. Mm-hmm. And then they get to grow after. So they become different things that are somewhat constrained by the fact that they're recorded and released, but they still have a chance to grow. Yeah, and it's forever, too. Do you <laughs> think in the studio, like, what we're doing now is going to be, you know, 20, 
22, me and you were sitting there talking about what you did that um, long ago. Sometimes, you know? like, that's sometimes I mostly just think about, like, man, I hope that it's good. Like, can we do something good? And yeah. I think that's what the 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 main thought that's going on in everyone's head. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, with Christina, that we just really wanted to. Was it cool it. to show your parents, like, look, you know, this is this is our album. Here's our own mom. You know, in a sense, like, I found out way later that my mother was kind of like, I don't know what this boy's doing with his life. And, <laughs> Uh, and she was kind enough not to tell me. Oh, yeah. You know, but she was like, I don't know. And then you showed up and you you got, uh, you know, wound up this making app. a legit record and wound up doing these things. And I was like, okay, all right. Just came right right together right before I had to tell, Mm-mm. step in and see what, what's going on. You had to give her a presentation on why you should like, listen to this. I was like, this is why this band exists. <laughs> <laughs> I this like is the what he signifies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk about this album cover. But it, 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 did you guys, did you come, did your singer come up with it? Or did you have no, to hire uh, somebody? Artist, well, it was a friend, yeah. Alex Brown. Alex and Brown. He, yeah, rest in peace. And he, um, he was also in uh, Gorilla Biscuits. Oh, yeah, Gorilla Biscuits. And he's an yeah, artist, yeah. you know, so. Your singer was in Gorilla Biscuits, right? Is. Yes, is, uh, is Walter. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm learning, man. Mm-hmm. That's cool. The name came from a dictionary. And, uh, it did the name. Yeah. Oh yes, that's good. Okay. That was like Tom and and dictionary Walter. like. like it's like. Yeah, I did the same thing it's on my hard. first band. It's hard. Yeah, we misspelled something. We thought it was, uh, ron- it was rendezvous. And <laughs> you remember this? And my singer goes <laughs> rendisfus, <laughs> amazing. And we're like, that's rendezvous, but yeah, we'll, we'll call it rendisfus. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool, man. I like the dictionary thing, dude. That's old school. I think that people have, you know, anyone doing projects trying to find a name for it, especially less than five words at this point. Yes, yeah. Was any other band's name Quicksand? After. And no, yeah, After? before. We found out, yeah, yeah. At the time, we didn't know, but later, yeah, we found out there was like some band in the 70s, mm-hmm. a band formed after we broke up with the name, too. Yeah, does it matter at that point, you know? I don't know. I think it's just like, we were kind of talking about it the other day, and it's like, hey, may the best one win. <laughs> exactly. It's like, what are you going to do? <laughs> All right, let me see. Got, oh, yep, second one. So you guys toured on this when you come back and do your second record. Mm-hmm. These are songs you wrote on the road or no. written on the road? No, brand no, new? no, yeah. We, we get into a thing and we start working on it. Do you it. just work with the guitarist and you guys come up and, I mean, you come up with ideas, he does. And do you, do you make the music first and give it to Walter? No, it's, does... it's all kinds of ways, but like the two main ways that things came together would be either there would be like um, a loose kind of skeleton coming from Walter, like on the guitar end, Mm -hmm. and then we would really just build it up. You know, Mm -hmm. like here's like a loose idea or maybe just a lead riff, here's like a lead riff. And then the other way would be something that came from like Alan and myself. Oh, okay. Which would be like, here's like just a a cool like groove or like a cool A, B. You guys would come up with something? It was just jamming. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of it is jamming. And um, so those are the two predominant ways. And then mm-hmm. like the third way we were talking about earlier was like, you know, Alan would pick up a guitar sometimes and just kind of have a riff mm-hmm. or, you know, Tom would have a riff and like we can build up off of that. Did they ever have like a good idea? They think it's a good idea and then just get shot down? Oh, like, we all, everyone has, you, that's, oh, that's, that's stinks, part of life. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you ever show them a cool bass thing and they're like, nah. Yeah. And you're like, I'm, this course. is gonna oh, work. Totally. But that's why I learned to record. So then mm-hmm. rather than, leaving a, a bass line out there to die. You know, you like, save it. I recorded and I programmed drums and play guitar over it and do this and show that it can make it can it can function. That's awesome, man. You know, so that kind of that kind of really inspired me to to record and make demos mm-hmm. when before I wasn't really th- you know, we'd kind of get into a room and jam or other bands I just here's a song on bass and everyone yeah. would play the same thing mm-hmm. and it wouldn't really matter. That's what we all did, yeah. Yeah, we all just played the same part, so that was cool. Yeah, you kinda but evolved. <laughs> as as the as the as the stakes got higher or, or we got better, yeah. you know, you had to you had to start like I for myself was like finding ways to go, hey, this is how this could work. Because mm-hmm. like if you're playing guitar and singing, you can imagine how you'd sing over it. So if something doesn't sound so hot to everyone, you know like, oh, I know it's gonna work. Yeah. You know, but like if you're presenting someone, they're going to be like, I don't know if I can sing over it or I don't know if this is even good. Yeah, yeah. And then when you do those other things, then it helps. Dude, that's smart. Yeah. Um, when you guys um, recorded this, you go on tour. I mean, was this a two month run on this one as well? Yeah, I think, no, I feel like everything was years of playing. Because mm-hmm. at this time, we we're doing like a couple of hundred shows a year. Really? So you're grabbing a following. You got to be. I mean, 100 shows a year. No, a couple of hundred. Couple like of 200. Hundred. Like I think. Wow, I you guys are road dogs. Man. Our most. It was like 280 some odd shows a year or something wow. in a year. It's and we insane. were going hard and like. How do you not get burned out on that, man? You don't. You do. 
You do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you get burnt out. Oh, gosh. You yeah. get burnt out. And, uh, but making this record was fun. It was, was? Just, it was, it was fun and it was challenging because, you know, we, it was the same thing. We were just like, what are we, what are we trying to get, what are we trying to do, how we're trying to be? Mm -hmm. and, and feeling like, you know, we come from a place and we come from a world that, and we, but you still want to expand. And it's like all those kind of, you know, yeah, man. thoughts about that. I think we thought a lot about stuff back What then. kind of music were you listening to while making this album? I mean, was there some kind of band or what kind of style of band you were listening to or did I think that change? Like, yeah, well, by the, when we're doing Slip, uh, our, before Slip, our guitar player turned us on to, uh, Tom turned us on to My Bloody Valentine yeah. and that kind of stuff. And it was like their earlier stuff that was super noisy, like mm -hmm. isn't anything. And it took us a minute to get it, but then all of a sudden it kind of clicked for us and we were like, oh my God, this is like amazing. Mm. And that became our thing. And then by this time we had that. And then we also had like um, whatever our individual things started to creep up, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I, I, at this time I was listening to like um, a lot of like dance hall. Wow. Yeah. And uh, a lot of reggae. And also my bloody Valentine, and also that you know, like everyone, everyone in the band will, will tell you like, oh, we all like this, yeah. but we all had this other thing yeah, as man. well. So like the Venn diagram, you know. I wonder how like, your bass style like was influenced like that, you know? Oh, I mean? uh, it's it makes it like uh, what I like about dance hall is like um, it's like led by the rhythm section. Mm -hmm. the bass parts are very musical and substantial, mm -hmm. but they're not super busy. Mm -hmm. And like not I was overplaying. Yeah, and I was feeling like in rock and roll or a lot of other things that I was hearing, like not super stoked on either end of it of like, I'm just, you know, just playing the root note or over here, I'm just making feels like crazy to stand out in this song that was written. And I didn't, they both to me were not my cup of tea, mm -hmm. you know, but then here, you know, not there, but in like in dance hall, I'm listening mm -hmm. and it's like, like these parts are substantial. This, this is, this is a thing. It's like a part. It's not too that's crazy. So cool. It's a thing. It's like a yeah. real thing. And that was like, that informed me a lot to be like, that's, that's how you do it. I feel like a documentary needs to be made about you. Because like, <laughs> you got some good stuff, man. Oh. I can see flashbacks. Did you ever take bass lessons? Um, only, well, early in, in school, mm -hmm. you know, for orchestra. Mm -hmm. And then later. Did you enjoy that in orchestra? Yes. Yeah, he did? That's good. Most people like always say no. <laughs> that was fun. It was like playing the bass, having like a, Having a bow and being like, uh, uh, you know, I thought it was like amazing. Yes, it, it was incredible. I loved it. And uh, later, I took one lesson with uh, Carol Kay. I did like a, a Zoom lesson with her from mm -hmm. the from uh, the Hit Squad. Oh, the Hit Squad. Yeah, yes, I know them. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. you took, oh, you did a Zoom thing on. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. I took a one lesson. I got it for a birthday present. Oh wow! And uh, and I did a lesson with her. And that was awesome. Was that like was it intimidating? No, no, yeah. it was funny. Yeah, it was just cool. mostly funny because she was super nice. And she didn't know me from anything, which is, you know, okay, which is okay. fine. So she had no context. And she's like, so I'm looking at you. I figure, what do you want to learn? So you want to learn some jazz licks? Or you want to learn some funk licks? And I was like, no, I play metal. Metal. And she's like, oh. And I was like, <laughs> and then I had learned something about some techniques she had about like, it was like some sort of co co uh, scale modality mm -hmm. that I saw in a, in a thing, and I forget what it's called now, sadly. But um, that helped. You I asked her about that. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, "Hey, I want to know about this." Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "Oh, all right." <laughs> and then the first cool thing she gave me was like to lead with my ring finger or my middle finger, rather. To lead with rather okay. than this. Yeah. You know, she's kind of like start with this, and this gives you the space over here and the space down here. Oh, that's so place. smart. I was like, "Wow." Dude, was, bass was my first instrument. Like I, I ever learned it. of all the things. That's that's so cool. You never think about that. So yeah. Can you play funk though? Like you mentioned no, that. No. You, you, have you ever done the slap and pop, no. like the flea style? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And then like kind of like I'm a pick guy. Pick, you are okay. Pick till death, kind of. Forever. I do you always have, have been. Have you ever tried to? Do, do I don't the, enjoy it. You don't. Yeah. Okay. And it, and to each his own. Like yeah, it is. Like it when is. I say it's it, no like, wrong with that. I say kind of jokingly, but like about picks and like if because people. You know, you'll see like people sometimes they're opinionated and they got jokes or they got things to say. Oh, he's what his fingers is this or he's what his yeah, picks is. Especially bass players who are anti pick. So, <laughs> is that a thing? I've had, yeah, 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 yeah. So I've, I've had fun being like, Jason Newstead, man. Pick, yeah, you know? Pixar, what, what bass uh, artist influenced you? Like, who, who was your favorite, you know, maybe top couple of favorite artists you like, bass player wise? My do, main, you have, do you have some like favorite yeah, ones or my main, influential? Uh, 
my main three influences are, uh, his name is uh, Aphid. He's the bass player from the band Amoebics. Oh, okay. And that is my favorite bass I'm player. I'm to check this out. Amoebics is my favorite bass player Yes. Ever. What's his name again? I think it's Affix. Probably not. Affix. We're gonna, Affix. I don't know. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh we're good. Yeah, but that's I cool, man. But I'm going to tell you. But he influenced you, though. Yeah, he's the singer and the bass player of uh, Amoebix. And when I listen to them now, I realize they're kind of like the Pink Floyd of, like, crust punk. Wow. That you is, should really listen to dude, them. Dude, that was a cool sentence. Like, the, 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 yeah, I like that, man. I got to check that out. They're dude. like a crust punk band, but they're dirgy. They yes. have a lot of synths uh -huh. and very epic. Yeah. And uh, so that's one. And, then, and that he sings and plays too. Yeah, and then another one is a singing bassist. Now that I think about it, is uh, Doug from uh, Kings X. Kings, oh my gosh, it's Atlanta, man. Dude, uh, this is a, our hometown. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, dude. and the way he plays is like he, they're still doing it. Yeah, and his tone. He plays with uh, uh, with Ray Lazier from Corn on a KXM too. I mean, the guy's amazing. And we became homies, so that was really? awesome. Really, that's it, dude, it, man. You know, yeah, like, he's I never, been around I never forever. really geeked out, but I'm like, that dude is sick. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like as a rhythm section, Sly and Robbie. Okay. Because that's that's kind of like the thing. I like this, man. This is cool. That's the thing. You know, the yeah. thing is, is like these parts make songs. Uh huh. It's like it's led with that. Everything else is like ear candy and stuff or stuff that's happening. But like you're leading from that instrument. Yes. So I'm glad that I didn't, I picked up bass before I really got into rock. Because mm -hmm. I think I might not have played bass. You know, I could might have picked up a guitar or something. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that like where bass was sitting in the, you know, the hierarchy of rock. Dude, you're so well versatile. Yeah, I didn't think about that. A lot. Yes, yeah. that's so great, dude. Um, so the album right there, what's your, um, you guys, uh, that was it, right, on that second album. Mm -hmm. So, okay, story, and I was with Carl during this. We saw you at the Tabernacle Atlanta on stage with the Deftones playing bass. Yeah. Around and the Fur Tour. Around the Fur Tour, yeah. She hurt his foot. Mm-hmm. 1998. 1998. How did he call you, man? Did he, did he reach, did the band just reach out to you? Yeah. Because we had met in 95 on the first work Tour. Wow, and, that's um, cool. That's yes. how we met. Yeah. And, and it's funny because you mentioned Bad Brains earlier. So someone, uh, a homie asked me, to say, oh, you should go check out Deftones. And I was mm -hmm. like trying to get some context because I hadn't heard of them. And he said, oh, they love Bad Brains. You should check them out. I was like, cool. And I checked them out I, and I really loved them. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it was awesome because like they weren't really from like the hardcore scene, but they brought like a real... Yeah, cathartic energy that it's I different. thought was awesome, and then I just went and introduced myself to them and like kicked it with them instantly, like and connection. Just, just, just vibed, and um, that was kind of it. You know, That's like cool. we we maintained, you know, like an acquaintanceship, mm -hmm. and they just happened to be up in the northeast when when she uh, got injured, yeah. and I was really close, and then. It was like, oh yeah, cool. Let's let's hit him up. Was Quicksand doing anything? Oh yeah, yeah. You guys were taking a break, right? Mm -hmm. Quicksand. So what, what were you doing when you get this phone call? I mean, you're just at home chilling. You're like, hey, Sergio, you want to? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. God, man, I freak out, man. <laughs> like, no, it was just like you yeah, want cool. to play on stage with Deftones. I yeah. didn't. Well, I mean, let I me didn't, think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just like I didn't look at it through that lens. It was just more like, oh my, oh, dude's from Warp Tour, cool. Yeah, like, yeah man, that's it's rad. So they had two albums out, right? They had self, I mean, the first one in uh, mm -hmm. Adrenaline, and they had uh, Round the Fur, right? Yeah, and it was fun because like I, um, I didn't have a lot of time, and it was fun yes, pressure. Okay, you didn't. So they give you a set list and say learn. It was the like set nine list. songs or something, and it was oh, okay. it was just fun. And then I got like, you know, I just like got the records and then learned them, mm -hmm. and then kind of had to like keep listening to it on, on repeat because you did, yeah. It was the first time I was ever like doing. Other people's music. Were you, yeah. you were just listening to it on CD over yeah. and over again, or were you uh, working yeah. with stuff? Or no, I just listened to it on CD. We was had there, like a rehearsal, I think. Oh, tight, tight. Was there any songs out of those nine that like were like hard to learn? Or it wasn't that they were hard to like, learn. Just, it was more that it was a lot of information, mm -hmm. and um, it'd be different. Like if I, you know, brought into something later when you've listened to it for years and you're like super familiar with it, but I wasn't mm -hmm. like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they were. Right. I was hearing the songs a lot for the first time, but also learning them uh -huh. and figuring it out. And and they were different tunings for me too. So. Oh okay, yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Were they lower? I guess dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she plays with his fingers. Is that different when you're playing with a pick? I mean, the same thing. You just no, like, honestly, I, is it weird? Like, uh, I really believe that um, it's easier to make a pick sound like fingers than fingers sound like a pick. 
Wow, that's a, that's a bold statement. I've never it's heard a true that. Statement. Yeah, well, true. I didn't make it up. <laughs> that sounds like you did right there, right there. Sergio. I'll take that's it. good. <laughs> but uh, were you talking to Chi about the songs and stuff, or no? He was just we out. didn't even talk. He was yeah. There was oh, okay. Nothing to say. There was no, no no talking. He he was injured. He went home. I got a call. They're like, hey, you free to do this? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, man. I saw you on stage, and now you're here. That's amazing. How, how many shows do you guys do? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, it, it was, was like a. Lot? a mm, and that's a huge album. It was like a month of touring. A maybe? month of touring. Yeah. So See? it was cool because then I got you know like uh, get to know the songs. Mm. You know, you get a chance. It wasn't like like here's do a show and then you're like you know they became ingrained. So that was that was cool to have that opportunity. Which favorite song to play on there, man? There's nine, dude. There's all, I don't know, it's just, I'm just trying to get it right. You just know, I wasn't like oh I like this and not that. It was more like. So at the end of this, did what did the band say to you? They're like, okay, you know, thank you for playing or whatever. Yeah, we just stay in touch, yeah. Yeah, stay in touch. And then we just, uh, there wasn't even like, we we're homies. We we're kind of acquainted. And yes. then there we got to become homies. And then after that, it was like whenever, oh, I was like DJing parties and stuff. So like, that's after, what you did afterwards? Yeah, I was the, yeah, I was like, now that's, that's it, it, cool. I'm trying to remember the whole context, but I was like DJing a lot of parties. So then when they came, when they would come through, New York, they just come to my parties and we just kick it. That's cool, man. So you didn't have to work some like nine to five job. You like you still had cool like side things I going need on. DJing. And stuff, yeah, that's man. cool, man. Yeah, I like doing parties is fun. Absolutely. Um, then you guys got back together, right? Yes. And this is the one. This came out. This was a long time afterwards, right? Twenty two years. Yes. How did this? How did you guys like get back in touch? You're like, who made the call? We never stopped being in touch. We're oh, okay, you're all friends. friends. Yeah. We were always friends. How many it's, times were you like, we should be a band again? Or like, never. Uh, never. <laughs> that was never. funny, dude. But it was fun because like it was the right time. Mm, I it think was, the time yeah. apart uh, made us appreciate each other more and what that was, you know? Mm -hmm. And kind of talking about what you said earlier was like the burnout bit of like yes, playing that yeah. many shows. It's kind of led to us taking that time because it was so consuming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we went from people, you know, playing music as, you know, kids in the hardcore scene and now you're yeah. like playing 280 some odd shows a year. Yeah. Doing that for two album cycles. And then we kind of just walked away. Wow, that's hard. And, but had we, had we, um, we talk about, you know, you know, had we, uh, had we been, had we had our mindset now, you go, oh, you take a break. Mm -hmm. You, you know, just take a break as a band, but. Was your record was like, contract? Oh, did, I'm sorry, I interrupt you. But did your record contract allow you to just quit? They like can't that? stop you. Yeah. You can't stop you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. I mean, I don't know like... if it ever works like that. But they just go, oh, all right. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, when we got back together, they were really like, oh, same record. We actually, contract, you know, yeah. we tried to make a third record in between those. Oh, you did. Mm-hmm. And uh, and our label was very happy, you know, that we tried, and they and they made it very inviting and made it very easy to get back together and mm -hmm. and it just wasn't the right time it didn't really come together oh okay but then then here all right and that that's was, awesome man so what was it like being in the studio for the first time and how long you know it was great it was cool because like um everyone um we were working when it first came up we were recording koi mm. you know and then the idea of just playing a show came up mm -hmm. and then um <clears throat> When we were making the record, everyone, when recording the Koi No Yokan record, everyone who was kind of oh, yes. hearing, we're talking about it. I'm yes. like, hey, I was talking about this, so we're going to maybe play a show. Yes. Y'all you know, should make a record, and you should do this, and you should do this. And it was like super cool to have that. And then, so Walter and I were talking and hyped on it. Uh -huh. And then his job was like, look, get, talk to Tom, and he was to talk to Alan. And Alan had gotten kind of just gotten more off into other stuff musically and doing other things. So he didn't think that there was any reason to. Mm -hmm. So it was more like convincing him. And he went up in LA and uh -huh. we brought him by the studio when we were recording. And yeah. Nick Raskill Lennox was there record, you know, producing yeah. Deftones. And he was all like, you got to come back together, man. You got to do Dude, it. that is so cool. And man. you got to like, and I'll record you. And, and um, Deftones management wound up being, was one of the managers from the group of there that day. And he's like, you got to hook him up and help They're him cool. out. They're cool. It's all good. And then he's all like, I want to manage him. And then wow. everything, and they were so super stoked and helpful. Oh, that that's so it was, good. It was helpful because like, then it got Alan to be where he was like, oh, you know, like. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Fire me. There's some, yeah. Yeah. Because it was hard. He it, uh, it wasn't really budging. And that, <laughs> made, that made it happen. And it took us four years to, to pull that together. Four years, huh? Four years to write all the music, get everything Not going. even to write it, but just to figure out what we were going to be at that time. Uh-huh. Did you guys, so you go on the road for this. Um, you know, there's a question I want to go back to you that I, I totally forgot. Um, 
Um, when you did the 1990, when you were helping uh, fill in for Chi, I remember, d didn't you guys open for Deftones too? Yes. It was Quicksand and then you guys. Yeah, Deftones. but that was a different time. So I, I wasn't filling in for Chi on that tour. Oh, you were But weren't. Quicksand opened for Deftones on a run yeah. while we were trying to make our third album that didn't Oh, okay, happen. okay, I got that confused. We had, I had to straighten that out, yeah. Yeah, we had broken bothering. up, and then we got back together and we're trying to make a record. Yes. And they took us out on tour. Uh -huh. And then uh, that was super cool. Yeah, that. But then right after that is when I filled in for G. Oh, okay, And okay. then right after that, Quicksand was like, we kind of, Ultra and I met, and kind of was like, ah, it's not coming together. Oh, okay, okay. Um, did you hang out with G a lot? Not, I knew him the least, obviously, because, because of the situations. Yes. So we had a couple of, you know, chances to really kick it, but not like that, you know? Yeah, and I've heard you on other podcasts where it's like, uh, you know, Joshua Tim, I think he's like, do you have any good Chi stories? And yeah. we're all dying, we're like, does he? You know, like, because nah. we love hearing about Chi, you know? Yeah, just a couple of conversations about like music and bass and yeah. gear. But yeah. like, I don't, I didn't have the, you know, the fortune to be able to. Do like, you uh, read a lot, like a lot of books? Because Chi read a lot, right? So he was big into that. I remember trying to get his autograph and, he, and one time he was, he was like, where's the bookstore? <laughs> Not really. Sometimes I go through phases, you yeah, know, yeah. like, but um, with periods of liking to read and periods of just liking to watch things. And stuff. Mm, me too. I'm like audiobook. That's what. That's Audiobooks what, are dope. Yeah, that's where I'm at, man. Um, let me see. Um, okay, so this is the big thing. They ask you to join the band after she's uh, uh -huh. the accident. Yeah. How, how was this phone call? Them reaching out to you, man, for it, Diamond Eyes. It was. It was. Um, it was similar to the first time, but it was out of the blue. Mm, but it was mm -hmm. it was infinitely more tragic. Yes, you know. So that was, and um, and then my, but my thing was kind of the same in the sense of like, oh, these are like my homies, and like, mm -hmm. how can I help? You know. Yeah. And then that was kind of the long and short of it, and it quickly just went from not really kind of knowing like what we're, you know, just kind of came out there and jammed a little bit. And What was the vibe like in the room? Oh, very welcoming. Was it? Okay. Yeah, that's good. And, um, and we were homies. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of different than coming in cold to something. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it, obviously it's like, it's sad, but it's like, they were just, you know, it's kind of, they were just very welcoming. Yeah, man, I know they did, right before this, they did uh, the Euros <laughs> record, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we just jammed a little bit. And mm -hmm. kind of went in there, and like I had, you know, learned a couple of songs, and and then we just kind of made up a couple of things, you know. I'm oh, like, you did. Okay, so most of the music wasn't already written. You're kind of just working together. Oh, the ideas. music for what? For for Diamond. Oh, there was nothing. Oh, okay, all scratch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was nothing. That's cool, man. Having ideas and giving like creative input, and we're just jamming. I mean, it's yeah. kind of like what ideas like collaborate and mm -hmm. do things. It's like you know, have a history of that, and they were just like, you know, they're they're very collaborative. And super talented people. So. That sounds amazing, man. So what you did is great too. It was. It was. And then um, the one thing I was kind of like think about with that is Nick Rescue and Linux got us all together, and you know he produced it and took us out to dinner, and he was all like, "We're gonna be in this boat together. We're no one's going home. We're like kids in camp, <laughs> and everyone and bring your thing." And he pointed at everybody, and kind of did like something that he likes about them. Okay. And he, <laughs> wait, wait, what he likes about, like, so he'd say what he likes about you and like. Yeah, like, but he saw I was last, but he went, you know, like, you, I want to hear that, jump, 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 you know, and you don't want to hear that, Shh. and you don't want to hear that, ah, and then you don't want to hear that, you know. <laughs> That's cool, And man. then he went to me, and I was like, oh, this is. You don't want to hear that. I was getting hyped. Yeah, I was yeah, just getting yeah. hyped. I was like, yeah. What did he say? And to me, he just kind of did the intro to uh, the song Head to Wall. Okay. So yeah. he's like, do, 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 do. And I was like, oh, he actually, I was like, that was, uh, then I was super sold. Like, he, <laughs> he took that, you know. What's it like working with Steph, man? Like, he's he's got his own style and everything. I mean, do you, do you guys work together like you did in Quicksand? I mean, Quicksand. Everyone, it's the same. same They're process. very similar. You know, but different. It's it's similar and different. It's similar in that you kind of get into a room. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of active listening. So like, if person has something, the other person can jump on it. It's yeah. it's almost gets like you don't even know where it's coming from necessarily. But like, um, I think one of the cool things about working with him, you know, specifically about the dynamic of our instruments is that uh, when we play together. It's super precision and like playing with the pick and it, his picking can be mm. super precise. Is it? And that's really fun because it's like when it's super locked in. Oh, okay. And then our um, 
and our guitars have their different kinds of tonality that create something super nice, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, it, and then in the, the that can, makes a nice thing where, uh, you know, Chino can come in and play over it, or if he's matching it, then since we're always all in different tunings, it creates like a really cool wall that's different than if you're all playing the same thing in the same tuning. Oh, okay, got you, yes. But yes. then also because he plays like eight strings. I was gonna ask you, you play four strings, right? I play four strings. You ever then, done five? No. Yeah, okay. I play four strings and uh, then I went to the basics. Okay. And, but what, um, what's cool about that is that it opens up a lot of space where for us in the registers, like uh, it opens up a lot of space for like kind of going back to the reggae thing and the melodic aspect. Mm -hmm. it, it opens up a lot of space for like doing things melodically mm -hmm. on the bass that doesn't lose certain frequencies. So you can jump up for a couple of bars and do cool things that Dude. that that he's like holding it down. And I get to like do what I would do melodically, but even like an octave higher than I would be able to. Oh, that's cool. And it, and it creates it creates cool uh, opportunities for interplay. That's amazing, dude. Yeah, it's sick. It's, I, it's I awesome. Saw, I saw a video once of you, like your guitar pedals, and it was like just a smorgasbord. Like it was all these pedals and everything. Do you, did you use that on this album, Diamond Eyes? Uh, all it, the time. Yeah, it's just I mean, a I've big board. Same, I was like, yeah. man. I've had a similar setup since I was like 18. Okay. And just add to it. And then eventually, for Diamond Eyes, what was fun also was that I think Stefan and I jumped into Guitar Rig. Mm -hmm. So we were using laptops and we were using Guitar Rig 4, I think, was what was out at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we were building kind of cool patches and crazy things that like when you're using pedals, you know, the more pedals you use, it degrades the signal. Okay. But like when you're going into the digital realm, it doesn't. And you can do <laughs> pretty sick things that don't make sense, you know, like routing wise, you know, yeah, actual yeah. pedals. So like a song like Diamond Eyes and all the gurgling and all the noise happening is coming from like my patch on the on in guitar rig on bass. Uh -huh. And it's something that I was like, oh, if I had all these pedals physically, it's like, who has like three or four delay pedals? Yes. Who has this, who has that? And uh -huh. So that, that's it, so it's creative. a lot of fun experimentation. Yeah, yes. I like that, that's so tight. Uh, what was it like doing the music video for, uh, what was the song, Diamond Eyes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was cool. It's yeah, like- I love that, that video. It was cool, it was just, it was fun. It, it, that was, um. Like, you're not there for a lot of the post-production stuff. Okay. So it's like, for us, it's like you're kind of playing and then go about your day. There, there's not, that wasn't like, as a, as a performance video, it's, it was pretty cool and fun. It yeah. looks good, yeah. And it looks cool, but all, the, all that other stuff comes after, so you, you're not there seeing that happen. So when you see the final product, you're like, wow. Oh, you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, every song on that album is good, by the you're way, like, man. That's a solid record, dude. It was, it was, it was awesome. I mean, the, the term Nick used was catching lightning in a bottle. Oh, amazing. And he was yeah. really about like us being there and like containing a lot of the energy that was built up from everything. Do the going circumstances on. going on. Everything, yeah. and appreciating it, yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, so reverence, appreciation, mm. and being like, you, you know, you gotta, gotta be here. And it mm -hmm. was, that was something that kind of like stayed. I, you know, if I if I wasn't pumped on music before, mm -hmm. I was super pumped on it after, and and held to that yes. idea of that's how you should be. You know, how should make be present, making records, be there, even if you're done, mm -hmm. be there with the other person, be like. Yeah. You know, yeah, that kind man. of stuff is cool. Dude, that's so cool, man. It makes we, a difference. Man, we were talking about Juan earlier. Did you meet Juan during this time? Mm -hmm. the, the, the band assistant, that's our friend. Yeah. But uh, man, Juan's amazing. He's been on the show. But was he in, around that time? Were you mm -hmm. hanging out with him? Oh, yeah, Super yeah. cool guy, man. No, I had to bring him up, too. Yeah, he's sweet. He's fun. I love Juan. Oh, it's like, he's like, like, sometimes I think of him like a schematic. Like, he just has things. <laughs> he can, he just can say things and create just scenarios with, you know, like where you say, just, just like, you're just always like, how do you even think of that? And just like say that, it's like so funny. Yeah, man. It seems like you guys are super chill in the studio, man. Was it a cool hang? Like, is everybody kind of mm -hmm. like a good vibe? It's and hang, and, and, and like in any creative process, there's always gonna be tension in the sense that everyone yeah. wants things to be great. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's always supportive, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like the same with both projects. There's like a high bar for, uh, excellence in terms of making yourself feel good. Yes. And um, what that does and, you know, what that can bring, right? So it's like, it can bring tension, it can bring frustration. Mm -hmm. And it also brings a lot of joy and elation, like when you- How it makes it worthwhile. When it comes man. together, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yes. songs are funny. <laughs> yes. Songs are funny, especially when you're collaborative. Um, there's a, uh, this next album, you guys did. 
Oh my gosh. Koi no yok. Is that how do you say it? Koi no yokan? Man, that's hard to say for me. I'm listening to the song forever. Um, let's talk about this, the back. <laughs> I love the picture, man. This reminds me of like, uh, I think it was around the fur when you open the CD and you see the band. Yeah, it was fun. It was like 13 um, so Witness. Tokyo Massage. Mm -hmm. It's cool. That was over at, we were, uh, at the uh, Joshua Tree. Oh, you know, cool. running around there taking photos. And yeah. I think that's just there. That place was kind of there. And we just kind of sat in front of it. He was like, <laughs> 13th Witness was just putting us in front of spots. And we're just chilling and literally hanging out. Yes, man. Uh, and and it is, it's just. It's such a killer shot, man. The rawness of it. I just, just love that, man. Like, if, I want a poster of this. And before you leave, I want you to sign this. I just thought that was oh, okay. so cool. This album is amazing. Amazing man, Good. it is such a Thank cool you. record. Thank I you. love this album. I love traveling, driving on long road trips. Let's do it. I love. Yeah, it's just such a great record. Yeah, such I love a follow it too. Up. I love that. Like, there's seen this take the picture on the back. Yes. You know, we have like on the front the photo is is Futura, and yeah, you know, talk about that. That's his father. Well, we were um, we wanted to have Futura do the cover, mm -hmm. and um, it was strange because it was like. Initially, it wasn't kind of coming together. Like the things he was doing and the things we were hearing and stuff were like, it just wasn't jiving. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of had the idea to like, I was like, you know, I checked out his like Insta, you know, feed, and like we had all seen his Insta feed. But I was like, why don't we, you know, you should look through it and mm -hmm. see what's in there. And then there were some photos in there of stuff that was like super cool and just felt like it felt right. Yeah. So even though this is off his Insta. And even though it had you guys been, just found it, like, well, just, we were just, working with him already. And yeah, we were like, yeah. "Can we use that? This is rad." And he was is like, "Is it yeah. cool?" Yeah. Oh man, this is so good. Anyway, dude, what, um, man, what, what was it like recording this? I have so many questions about this record. It was fun. It uh, was. Um, are you singing a lot on here? Like are you live on the live stuff and like doing stuff in the demo end of it, or mm -hmm. like you know sitting in a room and helping develop melodies and not stuff. Everything, I mean, but not yeah, on the coming up with melodies, but and, not on the not on the like not on the you know kind of like riffing and stuff because. You know, singing, but I don't sing on the record. No, no you don't. That, mm -mm. Man, this, uh, you know. But it's uh, but it was fun because there was like a lot of momentum from making Diamond Eyes. Yes, yeah, you can tell. And man. the songs it's just, like a, and yeah. just keeps going, man. It's, it's uh -huh. going up. It's amazing. I feel like Deftones were a new band at this time, man. It was you know? fun. Yeah, just the energy, everything. I, and I, I just like the song. I like that they have intros and the intros have intros. They're outros. I like that there's a lot. They're kind of like, yeah, they're cool. very expansive. <laughs> What's it like being on stage with these guys during this time, man? It's just it's, explosive. It's, man, it's, such it's, passionate fans. Yeah, and I mean, it's a passionate band. You know, and everyone yeah. really, uh, no one takes it uh, for granted that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I think that's the thing. You know, I always think that, that, uh, is when when a band has that, and they genuinely care. And I think that's they and genuinely people see care. that, yeah. and and the people who support them are there at shows, and they see that it's something, mm -hmm. and there's a real thing. Um, it's relatable, mm -hmm. and you, and it keeps that fire for both parties. You know, for the people watching and the people playing, it's very infectious, and it's like it just goes around and around. So it's intense. It's fun. So you bring this home to your mom. You're like. There's no presentation needed. Well, by this You're point, like, she's kind of, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have a, why am I going over here? Let me see. I'm sorry about this, y'all. Look at this. Gore. This is uh, the next one, man. This sounded different. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was different. I think we were working with Matt Hyde at this point. He mm -hmm. had engineered uh, Koi. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then he produced this record. And it was kind of the same thing. It was like we we had momentum and we're just like, like just really kind of like experimenting and just trying to push things in Definitely, every. Yeah. I think which is cool, man. Yeah, there's no yeah, experiment. Yeah. There's no you don't walk in with like a game plan of I want to achieve X, Y, and Z. I oh, okay. think everyone so has. You guys a, didn't. It was yeah. I would say that everyone has their own. In you know in the projects that I have, it's like when they're collaborative. You know that someone's coming in with their, their personal agenda, the things they want to do. Maybe it's the new pedals they got. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the things they want to try, the new guitars, new tunings, new whatever. Yeah, yeah. And everyone has what they want to try to achieve personally. And you throw that in a room against each other. And then the things that everyone's excited about are the things that live. If that makes sense. You it know, does make sense. You don't sense. sit there and go, oh, I want to do this. Like, Was Stefan around around this time when he yeah. was recording? Okay, yeah. So he was around for writing and recording. Yeah, yeah, okay. For some reason, I was thinking he wasn't. He was no, he was a little bit. No, no, he not at all. And like, um, and that was like, we had spent, we had probably had the most 
kind of like material in terms of ideas and parts and loops and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. like I have a hard drive that has so many things on it, you know. And mm-hmm. we would um, we were getting together like mo- I think we got together months before we even brought in anyone else. Mm-hmm. And we we're just jamming and having fun. And so uh, a lot of the ideas were from even stuff that was before the official writing session, things that were just kind of on the hard drives that got oh, introduced. Okay. And or early ideas, yeah, yeah. Early ideas that were before the technical writing. <laughs> yeah. So I think that uh, that it was cool. So I, I think that um, the story of the, of the record is, is muddled in a way, and it kind of has mm-hmm. these things, but the way that I remember it, it was just like all uh, the collected material that we had and all the stuff that we did and everything that we were trying to achieve and get across, you mm-hmm. know, it was like, became that record. That's good. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, that the Deftones created a beer after this uh, Phantom Bride. <laughs> Great song too, man. I, man, I love it. It Dude. was fun, it was, it was really like, it was like a, a fun song that was kind of like, um, Stefan jamming on, the, on an arpeggio. And then like, sometimes when that happens, like, you know, Abe and I kind of go wild underneath it and do all these rips and all these things. And yeah. the next thing, you know, all that stuff is documented and you kind of look at it and listen to it and hone it in and eventually it becomes a song. And, and start, yeah, and you have a famous guitar player on there. Uh, oh yeah, he came in later. Allison yeah, James. yeah, that was awesome. Uh, why is my mind, Jerry, Jerry Cantrell. Cantrell? What was he like? Super cool. He's, guy, he's, he's the coolest guy ever. Oh yeah, he's super cool. And like, what was also sick about him, he came in, uh, he had come in, during uh, the Diamond Eye sessions for a day. Oh, cool. There was what like for? the thought, just to, like he came and just see if there was a way to get him on a song. And he kind of was like, I think it was might have been Prince or something. It didn't come together. Prince is a, a freaking amazing song. But there was, he had come by for it's a day or two. We were kind of kicking it and like at the idea of maybe somehow to work him in, but it yes. didn't come together. And then this time it did. And oh, that's amazing. It was dope. We sent him the song. He worked out a solo. He came in. Mm-hmm. And like, he was so humble. Like he was playing it and just shredding. He's like, is this good enough? You like it? Oh, I, I like, love that. Yeah, yeah. And then he did it, went home, and then called us. And the next day, he's like, you know what? I, I'm gonna crush this. I want to come back. Come back and do it again. And he came back a second day. It's and like then, perfectionist. And just like elevated it. It was, it was. It's rad to see. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering why it didn't, it didn't say featuring Jerry Control. And I think I heard Chino mention like he just wanted to keep it out, make it like. It's more cool, just kind of discovered on your own, like, you know, I don't know, but super cool, man. Yeah, he's just on the song, he's on the song, and he's like, yeah. you know, part of the song, and it's like, because it's less that he's featured on it, more that he's a part of it. Yeah, he's a part of it. He's just in the, he's in the song. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be super dope if you guys did a video with him in there, just show Jerry control, you know? Just, yeah, that guy <laughs> floats on air, man, it would've been sick. Oh, yeah, man. Um, all right, we'll do uh, this. What's it like doing an album during the pandemic? Oh, uh, I'll get that later. Well. We did that before the pandemic. Oh, okay. So we were very fortunate. Oh, and it was done. most of it was done. Oh, man, we did nice. some, yeah. Got a little, little back into the vocals, kind of during it, but. Uh, oh, that's that's good. Yeah, everything was. It's a great <laughs> album, man. That's amazing. This, um, this was such sh- different from from Gore too, man. I think they're they're. The beauty, the beauty of the band is that every album is different from every album. Exactly. Yes. So that's I one hundred percent agree. So Deftones always been that way, you know. It just is what it is. It's like, I like that. I like that. I like the idea of going in without an agenda. Yeah. But going in with with a with an energy level. Is it hard picking out the first song that you're going to release? Because I love like. When they throw like little samples right before it comes out, and like all the Deftone fans are just gushing, like, okay, can't wait to hear it, man. Is it? I wonder, like, I don't know if you had input on like what, what should we release first off this? Oh, you know, you, know, you have discussions so about it. Yeah, yeah really? Is it heated? It's like I no, want this song. No. no, I want this song. No, because I mean, no, who hates any song at a point? Exactly, if you're not backing yeah. the song, it's very hard that it's going to make it on the record. Okay. So good, if it's good. on the record, that means that everyone backs it. <laughs> you know, at least to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah. You know, and. Um, so the the issue just becomes like oh like what vibe you want, mm-hmm. you know, and you guys release the album and don't tour. <laughs> you know it's like right. It's like here it is, on Spotify. Check it out or whatever. Yeah, because I mean were you at home when it was released. Mm-hmm. 
That's wild, man. Isn't yeah, it? it's like hold up in the house. Like, what you do all day? Like celebrate? Well, or I listen a... to it and try to get up some Spotify. I'll play it again. Dude, I'll play it. Yeah, let me get all another right. click. <laughs> <laughs> man, this meant the world to me and uh, me and Carl here in this man. But it was even thank you. Is is, yeah. is it's a. Uh, I love it. I mean, me too. Do you hear that? Do you remember that thing where a lot of people said it looked like cheese eyes, mm -hmm. and they were showing the picture? But that, but it wasn't, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you come up with that? Um, that was like Frank Maddox, you know, with vibes and ideas and conversations. You know, and like mm -hmm. sometimes, like depend. You know, there can be a lot of different conversations and stuff. But I, um, I want to say that probably he and Chino had some. You know, maybe had a vibe or an idea. Mm -hmm. But definitely. Frank had sent out a bunch of different things, and there were things that kind of clicked with everybody. Oh, Frank did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Frank's cool. Maddox, nice. yeah. So he's like a... Yeah, that's tight. Mm -hmm. He's always been he's always been a big part of like the visual aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Good, man. Oh, okay. So I got to get... Just, this, uh, you going to lose your thing? Oh, yeah. Look at this. The latest quicksand album, 2021. Holy mm -hmm. crap, man. This is album's so good. I've been listening to this like ever since I knew you were gonna be on the show. I've been just playing this, and it's like I call it a slow burn because I listen. I'm like, it's good. I listen to it a couple times. I'm like, oh my god, I love this man. This is really good. Oh man, I'm so thank you. I love it, dude. The guitar riffs on here are just so good. Your guitar player is killing it. You are too, man. Oh, thank you. He's just super. Yeah, catchy, no, Walter. Dude. Walter's, and to me, the fun part about that record is just that it uh, it was being written the same time as Ohms. So I was like, oh, okay. Wow. How do you remember all these songs, dude? Oh, just. Uh, do you just ever like have a brain fart? You're like, ah, there's too no, much no, going no. on in my head. <laughs> oh, they're like, what, what is that? <laughs> is that Quicksand song or Deftone song? No. <laughs> what, what riff is that? It's, um, <laughs> honestly, the feeling that I'm having doing both those records at the time, them coming together, is like, I feel like the fucking shit. I feel You're great. The man, dude. I feel great. I'm just like, man, I'm part of some, some really cool things. And, yes, dude. And like, I'm like, uh, that's just the honest truth, you know. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm feeling like, wow, I'm playing with uh, seven. Let's see, how, what's the total? We got four other guys in Deftones, just, and so it's six people that are freaking incredible. And yeah. you're like adding to that conversation and coming up with things and going back and forth. Yes. And, um, and it's a great feeling, like to hear, to hear these songs come together. And then to be, hear those songs come together, and they're like it's so good. And they're like such so, such different worlds. They don't uh -huh. sound. It's not like these two bands that sound the same. You know, they they. Did you talk to the guys in Deftones about Quicksand? Were would you guys like were they fans of Quicksand? Uh -huh. That's yeah. how that's how we that's how we've really, that's how it all kind of came. Oh, okay, together. so yeah, they were fans. You know, of that's a part of it. Yeah, yeah that's cool. And uh, and you know, there was there was definitely a mutual appreciation, and they. When Quicksand was uh, broken up, they had become friends with the guys individually from other projects. Mm, cool, so there was cool. always that relationship. Yeah, yeah, it's tight, man. Thing. I love the artwork too, man. This is such cool vinyl. And it, may, it feels like it's like it's got this texture. I'm trying to sell it for you, man. Yeah. Um, the music's great. I was telling you earlier, Col Colossus, am I saying that right? Yes, yeah, so the artist, uh, Tetsunori. <sighs> oh, really? Tetsunori, he's, he's from Japan. And um, what was cool was that uh, we had, um, when we were towards the, the tail end of this record, mm -hmm. uh, oh, and actually, no, this is the first time that we actually had art direction while we were writing a record <laughs> and art okay. and ideas for art where um, um, my wife is, uh, she's our photographer and, and she also is a graphic designer. And one day she was just kind of like uh, hearing our stuff you know, because she's hearing the demos as they come home and mm -hmm. rehearsals, and she made up this like mock up of a album cover for Quicksand. Really? That was sick. It was Dude, like a that's mecha. Amazing. It was like a uh, mecha kind of like Godzilla style thing. It was from an artist whose name I forget, but he was from the 60s. And I brought it to the guys at rehearsal, and they were like, it's sick. It's going to be our cover. And it was like, and, and that also kind of was like, it, makes, it made us feel more aggressive, and it kind of informed. The music even coming that hadn't come yet. If oh, that makes sense. cool, man! It inspired and you. You never guys. had that. Just the artwork ever, made you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, and like, unfortunately, <laughs> oh, cool. 
he had passed and oh, we, no. we couldn't reach his estate. His, his mother was his estate and, and there was no, we couldn't use the artwork. Mm -hmm. But that led us to Tetsunori, which was an awesome thing because he's mm -hmm. uh, friends with Walter and he's an uh, amazing artist. And he brings a color palette that we were never even close to playing with. And the way he uses colors and the yes, brightness. Yes, I love We've the never, colors. I mean, Quicksand was never. It looks so different yeah, from anything you've done, right? And that was. Look at all this. I love it. I, and we had a harp. We, we basically used four things that could have been album covers. <laughs> You're right. Each yeah. of those could have been an album cover. You're right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Um, the music here is so good. That brush song, man. I encourage everybody to listen to this. Just, the, I just love the drums and guitar and bass, uh, and obviously your singer. Oh yeah, just riffs thank galore, you. dude. Thank you. It's the, so tight. You know, we actually have an un um, mentioned feature on brush too, because uh, Walters has a teenage nephew, mm. and um, he was uh, Walter gave him a couple of bucks to say, "Oh, make me a loop of something." You know, Walter plays drums too. He's playing drums in his place upstate New York, and his nephew pieced together some stuff and made a loop, and that became the bed of oh, brushed. Oh, that's so cool, man. So yeah, we got to feature his uh, nephew, which is dope. That is so cool. And you knew that was a good song, right, recording? Because I listened to the whole thing, and I was like, this song stands out. It was fun. Like To me, it came to life like um, like in the studio, because it was like really coming together in a cool way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, adding the bass line to it, like, and then kind of turned it around and made it all, like turned it on itself in a cool way. And, which is it's exciting, like it's, yeah, I bet. when something comes together, uh, the other and everyone else is supportive, everyone else is around, and you know it's a good feeling. And this is your main gig now, right? Quicksand. Mm -hmm. This you spend all your time and effort. Oh yeah, I it's mean, always yeah. yeah, it's been my baby for. Man, I'd love to get, see you guys live. I mean, you've got some dates coming up. Um, we hope to be we hope to be traveling this That'd year. That'd be tight. Yeah, yeah. I love um, YouTube. Um, you guys were uh, posting like little snippets of, of songs. I love hearing that, man. Are you guys going to release all that together, or is he like just the gonna, visual bits? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You're, yeah you, that's like, a good idea. Some of them are going through. Yeah, yeah. But either way, it's yeah. Fine. I mean, we did also those live sessions at a place called yes. Denver Hill, and yeah, that's yeah. how we introduced Steve Brodsky from Caven. Oh, cool, man. And that was fun. Yeah, I like that idea of doing that. That's pretty cool. It was really yeah. That was that was a fun thing. I didn't know <laughs> I was going to go down at first, and then I was like, man, this is super fun. <laughs> well, I love this record, man. Thank and, you. Uh, and I'm glad you're on the show, bro. This I'm is amazing. I'm super stoked to be here. Man, it, I'm so glad. Uh, I love your manager, Kenny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had to talk about him for a sec. He was uh, very thorough. and <laughs> He was like, really good. I really like it, man. He's Made it, like, everything easy. Yeah, I guess he's he's emailing me, calling me. I was like, but I, it's wonderful. You know, it's, it's, it's cool. You we've got been, a good manager. We've been friends for decades. And like, to, yeah, yeah. to bring him, it's like him and uh, it's like, it's like a co-management like group. Uh, him and Vaughn Lewis. It's, mm -hmm. uh, they're like, they're just amazing amazing people that's amazing you know, i'm fortunate in that way and like quicksand quicksand's management is like grant martin he's an awesome person you know so it's nice but kenny is like to finally be working with him is like together it's rad yeah man i'm i'm, I'm stoked for you dude carl you got any questions questions for the audience no, i just want to say sergio will always be a member of deftones <laughs> well thank you i love you i love you too Scott Even though we just met. I love you a lot. <laughs> I met you before. I met oh, you before. sorry. Well, you know, now we're kicking just it. Now we're in, in like, in, meeting and passing is yeah, different yeah. than conversing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, it's sir. It's a whole different thing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for being on the show, man. It means the thank world, you. dude. Thank I can't believe you're here, me. man. Like, starting the show, I never thought, like, Sergio, the guy we're seeing when I'm 18 on stage, hey, I'm going to kick it on my boat talk yeah. one That's day. That's right. We're going to drink some liquid death. The, dude, we're going to get liquefied. I got That's liquid death. I mean, death with coffee. We're making this whole thing. It's a bunch of death going on. Death coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't tell Kenny that. Sergio's coming over and we're talking about death. Death. A lot of death. death. He's getting here and it's going to be a lot of death. death. That's right. Yeah, yeah, man. But uh, cheers, liquid man. Thank death. you for being on the show. Yeah, li this is uh, Liquid Miller Light. Thank you for being on the show, brother. Yeah.